I'm your host, evangelist Anita Rivera. It is November 6, 2020, and I want to bring to you all some reports concerning some updates on the election and some news coming out from Russia uh, regarding President Putin. Actually, let's start off with that report right off the bat, seeing as that is right here. It says here, Vladimir Putin plans to step down next year, which is just right around the corner, folks, amid some health concerns. He's going to be resigning, this president. Putin has been, like, in office, in power over in Russia, it seems like forever. Uh, and, uh, well, this is the way he's going to be, ste- um, you know, this is the way he's going to be stepping down. He is, again, planning to step down next year as, uh, as, as major speculation uh, is swirling in Russia that the longtime president may have Parkinson's disease. This is a report that just came out yesterday. Moscow political scientist Valery Solovev said in a report that the Russian strongman's 37-year-old girlfriend, Alina Kabaeva, and his two daughters are pushing him to leave office. Uh, it's reported, according to Solovev, uh, there is a family that has a great influence on him. He intends to make public his handover plans in January 2021. She, uh, this was reported in the news outlet, The Sun. Solovey uh, suggests that Putin may be suffering from Parkinson's as the president has been seen recently exhibiting symptoms of the disease. Well, Vladimir Putin recently appeared to be in agony while appearing to constantly shift his legs according to footage reviewed by an observer. Reviewed footage also appeared to show his fingers twitching as he held up a cup that possibly contained medicine. So, you know, uh, again, uh, breaking news, Vladimir Putin is expecting to resign uh, as early as next year concerning uh, health concerns. Uh, We pray for his health. We pray that he gets better, whatever is causing those symptoms that they just, you know, they leave in Jesus' name. So we, we, we get to pray for people in positions. Come on. The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 2, First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people. Well, that includes President Putin and anyone else who may be suffering. Come on, you don't need to be a person in position. But uh, there's a special blessing, obviously, if someone is. Uh, and, you know, you happen to be uh, maybe, uh, you know, under their, uh, their, you know, under their leadership for that time. Because, again, the Word of God tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 2, as we pray, we, we bring forth supplications for kings and all who are in high positions so that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. So, uh, you know, amen and amen. Come on. Speaking of high positions, speaking of leadership positions, what is going on with the U.S. elections? We have uh, some, some reports here. This one coming out. Major concern, President Donald Trump's U.S. election legal threats poised to spark a major global economic meltdown. Now, we, I mean, as of this broadcast, we are still waiting to see who has won the presidency of the United States of America. Uh, right now, the numbers stand as follows. Uh, Joe Biden is at 264 electoral votes, and President Donald Trump is at 214 electoral votes. Uh, this is a major concern. Uh, it's, it's a collapse of faith, if you will, for many Trump followers and supporters, those who are in leadership positions, even in the church, in the Christian church here in America, that have prophesied and proclaimed that God, you know, that, you know, that God himself, that God himself promised uh, that President Trump would win a re-election. And so many are dumbfounded. Many are beside themselves. Uh, there's been some very interesting prayers coming out from some leaders. One particular from a, uh, was a Pastor Paula White, who happens to be on the uh, Evangelical Advisory Board uh, of, of, of the Trump presidency over at the White House. She apparently did a very, uh, you know, what has been touted, a very bizarre prayer uh, within the past day or so, decreeing and declaring for angels to be sent from, uh, you know, from Africa and I believe even South America to, you know, you know, bring forth the truth concerning the presidency. 
Uh, many are believing, uh, you know, from the White House or from the Trump administration that the election may have been stolen, that votes that are counted may be illegal. Some are legal, some are illegal. And so even President Trump himself has, uh, you know, come out in, 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 in a couple of, uh, you know, recent, uh, you know, broadcasts from the White House uh, stating that, you know, he's very disappointed and that he is going to go to court. And so apparently... Legal action right now is taking place on, you know, it's, it's actually happening on a national level. Uh, it could throw the U.S. stock markets and global financial sector into turmoil, according to financial experts. Uh, so let me give you some reports here. The election that first looked to be on a knife edge appears to be slowly tipping in Joe Biden's favor. Again, I know many people don't like this. You have a lot of Trump supporters, uh, you know, you know, diehard Trump supporters that are saying, yeah, this election is being stolen. I mean, what I know, I mean, I, I don't know if even my opinion would even matter, but I could give my perspective here, uh, you know, on the, you know, on, you know, on the broadcast. Uh, we, you know, according to so many, the nation is divided. And so when you actually see uh, the electoral votes, when you see the bar graph, if you will, that's being shown all across social media and the World Wide Web and, you know, your, you know, your local search engine, uh, it shows it. It shows a divided America. It shows uh, that, you know, it's, it's either you're going to be for one or the other, that there is virtually no middle ground. So, you know, I mean, that's what I see. Another thing that I find interesting is that, you know, that the word stolen is, is, is being touted a lot. I, I, I think that's, that's you know, I, I think it's very irresponsible and dangerous rhetoric. What if President Trump was at 264 and Biden was at 214? I mean, would we, you know, would there still be people saying that it's stolen? Of course, you're going to have your, you know, your, you, you know, you're going to have your, you know, you're going to have many people stating, well, you know, there were a lot of support for President Trump. And so this seems off. Of course it does. I mean, if, you know, from your perspective, and I'll be honest with you, I was actually driving down the freeway, I believe over the weekend, last weekend, it was last weekend, and I was, uh, you know, I was driving down the freeway, and I got, somehow I got, it, I, well, I didn't really get myself into it, it was already planned, I guess, uh, into a, 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 a long line, it was like a long succession of Trump supporter vehicles and so apparently, you know, this was planned throughout several cities in, in the U.S. So, you know, we have that right. We have that right to exercise, uh, you know, who we like and who we don't like publicly. Um, and so this is what took place. And so, you know, there were people, again, clearly he has votes. There are over 69 million people that voted for President Trump. But it just so happened, according to the, the stats... That 73 million, over 73 million voted for Biden. And so, you know, even though Biden doesn't have a Biden train, if you will, uh, there were still people that voted. And I think it's irresponsible of the church. So this is why I have a right to say what I'm about to say right now. I think it's very irresponsible, uh, and, and, you know, very immature, yes, but also very irresponsible and dangerous. And I think we're going to have to give an account for this. For us to now use the platform that we have as leaders, as pastors, as ministers in the church uh, to state that the election is stolen or could be stolen or to give even that illusion or that, you know, the possibility in, in our in our verbiage that, uh, you know, this is stolen. Because just as anyone who voted for Trump had the right to vote for him, so it is for any Biden supporter. And I think we have to remember that there are people in America that supported Biden. Not everybody was going to vote for Trump. Doesn't mean that they hate him. Doesn't mean that they have anything against him. They just, you know, they found whatever reason they found their way to, you know, you know, vote for Biden. And they have that right here. It's a constitutionally protected right. And so as a church, again, I just want to say this very quickly and I'll, you know, continue on with the reports. I think it's very irresponsible. As leaders, any leader in the church right now that is touting that this election is stolen and we got to seek legal action, you know, and, and, you know, you know, you know, stating that this is from the devil, this is from the enemy. That's ridiculous. We live in the United States of America. This is a nation that is comprised of a, a, a just a, an amount of different people, different opinions, different perspectives, different ideas. Uh, and as leaders in the church, our position is the Great Commission. We're to be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world rather than condemning. Uh, we can't bring condemnation to anyone who voted 
opposed to what you probably wanted. And so, you know, of course, you have many people saying, well, yeah, but this was God's choice. Trump was God's choice. That is your opinion. That's your belief. I mean, you know, there are people, uh, you know, you know, again, there's a lot of people that are angry and divided over this. And you have many in the church saying, yeah, but my pastor prophesied Trump was going to win a second term in re-election. I mean, you never know. It still could come out that way. We could wake up in the morning and this thing could be completely turned around because yet President Trump at 270 and Joe Biden stuck at 264. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think that's going to happen. I think that we, um, uh, you know, we have to grow up already as as a nation, as as, as a church. I, I'm, I'll be honest with you. I'm embarrassed for the church. I'm not talking about the American public. They have their right, but as a church, as a body of Christ, we're we're supposed to have showed up and showed out. We're supposed to have been a light in a dark time. And what happened is that many lights went out. Many watchmen on the wall decided to get off the wall and abandon their post. And it's been a mess. And I believe that we were tested not as a nation yet, but as a church and the church failed. It failed morally. It failed, it, it failed terribly. And so we're going to be seeing some repercussions. I believe we're going to be seeing the fruit of that very soon. Uh, and so in the meantime, just, um, you know, for those of you in the church that may not be in leadership positions, but you are a Christian, uh, you have a responsibility and, and your responsibility, our responsibility is to preach, be ready in season and out of season. Uh, because we are at the time right now where many people will not want to hear the word of God. They're not going to want to hear uh, what, what God, uh, you know, what his word has to say, what the Bible has to say. They want to have their ears tickled or itched because it is tickling and they want to turn their, their attention aside to fables. And so they don't mind hearing Humpty Dumpty rhymes or any type of Dr. Seuss rhymes. They, they, they'll, they'll go for that in the name of of God, but we were told by Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the, who who is the only begotten Son of God, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter twenty-four, he said that this will be signs, uh, you know, before the second return, before my return. One of the first signs that he stated was, "Let no man deceive you by any means." And so, if we have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, we're going to love man, we're going to honor man, but we're not going to be deceived by man. We're going to walk circumspectly, redeeming the time, knowing that the days are evil. Okay? So, uh, I pray that the church, I, I don't even, I, I, again, I'm, I, you know, the church has a lot uh, to, uh, you know, they're going to be accountable. This end time, you know, this church in these end times, okay, this church that should have known better. Uh, and and it's, in, it's 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 unfortunate. So we're going to see what's going to take place uh, very soon. In the meantime, let me bring to you again some some more updates here. Uh, the the uh, the global economic uh, well, I should say Donald Trump's U.S. election legal threats poised to spark global economic meltdown, according to some. Now, first of all, let me tell you uh, that. Uh, to win the presidency, a candidate needs 270, the highest voter turnout since 1900. Some 67% of eligible voters cast their ballot compared to 2016, 60%. This election has also seen unprecedented levels of mail-in ballot due to the coronavirus pandemic. As a result, con counting the votes has been significantly slower, a point at which Mr. Trump has fiercely contended and demanded be stopped. He says, this is according to Trump, that states continuing to count votes should be prevented from doing so, accusing the Democrats of fraud and cheating, having already launched legal action to halt counting in Pennsylvania and Michigan. Again, I'm just thinking that if, if it was the other way around, if Trump was winning and Biden was not, would this be okay with Trump? Would, you know, what President Trump is dishing out, would, would he be ready to accept himself if it was the other way around? For some reason, I don't think so. I, I you know, so I just think that it's, it looks, um, almost childish uh, that this come out uh, from the White House, you know, what we're seeing. Uh, anyway, let's continue. It is a turn of events that investment directors A.J. Bell uh, told Express, uh, now Express is an online, uh, you know, media source, uh, that he said that it could mirror the onset of the harsh stock market fall that occurred back in the 2000 election. Very similar, he said. Uh, and, it, you know, this is a controversy between Al Gore or this was a controversy at the time in the 2000 election between Al Gore and George W. Bush. Uh, here, a vote too close to call in Florida, even after several recounts, meant the result was delayed for weeks at that time in 2000. In this time, the U.S.'s S&P 500 stock market steadily declined, taking a sharpest drop by the time the case reached a court to 11.7%. 
Now, Mr. Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, has condemned the voting system in several states and has already traveled to Pennsylvania to contest the election results there. He has since denounced that he and Mr. Trump's campaign team will take the vote to the Supreme Court. Again, I, I don't, I don't, I think this is a waste of time. I mean, President Trump clearly has supporters. Again, over 69 million people voted for him this, in this, in this election. It just so happened Joe Biden, according to the stats, had over 73 million people. Very close, okay? Um, I, I, anyway, it's just, it's so bizarre to see what we're seeing. Uh, and, and to possibly waste a course time. Now, you know, maybe to the Trump administration is not a waste of time, but I, I think it is. The S&P 500 initially surged as it looked possible that Mr. Trump might be on to an election victory on Tuesday. Even as things took a turn in Mr. Biden's favor, though, late on Wednesday, the S&P 500 gained 2.1 percent, as well as a handful of markets growing, including the Dow and the Nasdaq. Uh, how long this upward surge might last, however, is up for debate. Back in 2000, again, between Al Gore and George Bush, the prolonged nature of the election result had lasting negative effects on financial systems, which is what we cannot afford at this time, okay? By the time the dust had settled at that time, following the court's decision, the S&P 500 had lost 12% of its total value. A.G. Bell said things are slightly different now as the Democrats are unlikely to win control of the Senate, the result being a limitation on their ability to push things through like, you know, like tougher regulation on banking, technology, and the pharmaceutical industry. However, as a firm uh, said, the disputed ballot was not the only issue for investors to ponder 20 years ago, not least because the technology, media, and telecom bubble had started to leak air. The bubbles collapsed, not forgetting the 9-11 terrorist attacks at that time became the defining theme of the 2001 as the S&P 500 index lost more than a fifth of its value in the 12 months after the Bush-Gore vote. Again, we're talking about President Trump's U.S. election legal threats poised to spark a global economic meltdown that looks very similar to what took place during the 2000 election. As such, politics will not be the only near-term influence upon market sentiment. Uh, you have monetary policy from the Federal Reserve, the pandemic, and corporate earnings will all have a major say, especially as the U.S. stock market looks very expensive on some metrics after a stunning multi-year run with only disturbed briefly in the spring of COVID-19 or in the spring by COVID-19. So uh, now should the decision eventually go to the Supreme Court, A.J. Bell suggested that the he suggested that the delay in announcement could have a knock-on effect on the rest of the world. They explained, and I quote, a lengthy dispute over who leads the world's biggest economy that is home to its biggest stock market, biggest bond market, and its reserve currency, and the only real military superpower would not look good and would not usually be good for sentiment. When Mr. W. Bush was eventually sworn in weeks later, significant financial damage had already been done. So... Again, this is not what we can afford here. This nation cannot afford for something like that to happen. Meanwhile, as Mr. Trump's team focuses its ire on Pennsylvania, the state's governor, Tom Wolf, cautioned Pennsylvanians that the full results may take several days. Writing on Twitter, he said, and I quote, we may not know the results today, but it's important that we have accurate results. Make no mistake, our democracy is being tested in this election. I'll do everything in my power, he said, to ensure that the results are fair and that everyone and that every vote is counted. That's according to Tom Wolf, the governor of Pennsylvania. Now, election officials there have said that the ballots count in some areas. It won't be finished at the same time as other states because of the state's new mail-in voting law. It is one of the few states where officials had to wait until election day to begin counting absentee ballots, which has delayed the process. So, um, very interesting situation uh, concerning uh, the legal action, the legal threats anyway, coming from the Trump administration, from President Trump himself, that could spark a global economic meltdown. And uh, I just hope that all of this uh, subside. I hope that, um, you know, that the two can work together in some way just to help the nation recover and recuperate from the pandemic, from the COVID-19 crisis. I mean, we were already forewarned, right, for months in advance that this, uh, you know, that the mail-in, you know, ballots could, you know, possibly pose an issue. But I think that, again, uh, it is obvious uh, that we may have a new president. And, and I know not many people are going to like that. I know that um, 
you know, you know, you know, from from what I read, uh, you know, Biden may enforce mandatory mask wearing, you know, and I'm not for that. <laughs> um, they, you know, we have, you know, a lot of things that came out from, you know, Biden uh, and, and his vice president, or, you know, and his, you know, possible soon to be vice president as well. Uh, that is, you know, that goes against what I know I believe and what others believe. Uh, but at the same time, uh, if, 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 if Trump truly is God's choice, I think we just have to be patient and stop acting the way we're acting again as a church. The church largely in America is doing something that is, um, is ludicrous. And I think that if they believe what they prophesied, that Trump is God's choice, then we need to sit back and let God fight for him. And I think that the more Christians neglect or they forget the word of the Lord that was spoken, the more that they kind of tie God's hands back and he, he can't work. He's going to wait till your guys are done. And then, you know, it's, you know, it's, so no, the chances of prophecy being incorrect or fraudulent is, is, is high. Just as Trump is touting that the, you know, the election may have been stolen, God may be saying, you know, false prophets are stealing my words. And so this could be a sign symbolically of the condition of the church. We're in trouble, folks. I'm telling you, the day of the Lord is at hand. We're living in the last days and God is no joke. For, you know, I say this, you know, you know, I say this, you know, forget about the presidency for a moment. God is watching everything and this is not pleasing to him. All right, now I got some more updates or, uh, you know, some more reports here. And really quickly, there was a question that was posed here. When do we find out who is president? When will the new president be announced? The U.S. election is here again. Uh, you know, when do we find all this out? Uh, there were some reports here that, um, uh, let's see here. There is no set time. <laughs> According to uh, the updated report here, there is no set time that the winner will be announced here or in the U.S., but a picture will become clearer as days continue. Uh, the result is taking longer to come in this time due to the huge amount of mail-in ballots because of COVID-19. And so, you know, again, this was something we were, that we were already warned about. Uh, we will know. I think we're going to know soon. We're probably going to know this week. Um, what, tomorrow? Or, gosh, what's today? Today's Friday. So we're probably going to know soon, probably today, probably later today. So it'll probably be confirmed. If not today, then probably as early as Monday. But I think, I think they know already. I think that, um, I think that the, that the delay is not so much to mail-in ballots as much as it is that they are doing something kind of like they're just, I think that they know already that Joe Biden probably has a, the 270 electoral votes. And for some reason, it's just being held back. Uh, uh, another report I want to share with you very quickly here. How the U.S. election outcome could impact Israel, the nation of Iran, and Middle East peace. Big deal, folks. While most Americans are anxious and concerned about the upcoming election outcome and how it may impact the U.S., one thing that wasn't even discussed in the recent presidential debate by Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden was a topic of foreign policy. I don't know if you all noticed, <laughs> I was able to catch a couple of the, uh, you know, presidential debates that took place and it was very, um, very skinny. I, you know, it had no meat, it had no depth to it. It was very shallow. It was very, um, you know, it was not, nothing you could walk away from and really ponder uh, things that you were probably able to ponder in, in you know, prior uh, you know, prior elections. So, you know, or I should say prior debates. So yeah, that was, that was interesting. Uh, and foreign policy was a big deal, especially in light of all that took place under the Trump administration. So, uh, anyway, what, what does remain though, is one of the most important issues facing voters. In fact, depending on the election outcome, the impact could greatly be felt across the entire Middle East from Iran to Turkey, to Jerusalem. The Middle East is all focused, um, on this election to see how the U.S. elections will shape the future of the region in the Middle East. According to some, it is a faithful election for the Middle East and Israel. Both former Vice President Biden and the incumbent President Trump have stated what would be their policies for the coming four years, and in certain ways they differ fundamentally, even radically. Michael Oren, former Israeli ambassador to the U.S., said in a report to CBN the following. He stressed that he believes Biden win or that a Biden win would result in his administration reversing certain Trump policies that benefit the nation of Israel. 
He said, and I quote, a Biden presidency would return to both the policies of the Obama administration and the Clinton administration, giving precedence to the achievement of a Palestinian state based on the 1967 borders with Jerusalem, East Jerusalem as its capital. One of the main concerns is how a Biden administration would deal with Iran and the possible resumption of the Iranian nuclear deal known as a Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or was known as JCPOA. President Obama and his administration viewed the JCPOA as their singular sterling achievement in foreign policy at the time, and I think they're going to go to great lengths to ensure that America returns to that agreement, according to Oren. With respect to Iran, both the former vice president and his running mate, Kamala Harris, has said unequivocally that they intend to renew the nuclear deal of 2015. If Iran returns to the level of uranium enrichment established by that nuclear deal, which is not hard for Iran to do, that has profound ramifications for Israel and the Middle East, uh, he believes that President Trump would take a different approach with Iran. He states, if President Trump has also said he would negotiate with the Iranians, or not if, he... Um, he states that Trump did or has said that he would negotiate with the Iranians, but I don't think he'd quickly remove the sanctions. And I don't think he would quickly enable Iran to go to be to uh, the, excuse me, I want to make sure I'm saying this correctly. Uh, and I don't think he quickly enables Iran to go back to be the largest state sponsor of terror in the world and seeking Israel's destruction. It's a significant, significant difference there. And then we have the Abraham Accords. Oren believes the Biden administration will not invest in those accords the way the Trump administration has. He says, I don't think they're going to invest money, for example, in building the Israeli-Sudanese peace because that belongs to the Trump era. Again, the emphasis will be on the Palestinian issue, now in the Abraham Accords. Oren went on to say, I know personally from being in contact with business associates in these areas, everybody's waiting to see what's going to happen with these elections. He also stated that regardless of who wins the election, Israel will be looking to maintain its traditionally close relationship with the U.S. And I think that Israel may be on to something. I think that we, we, we as a church need to follow that lead, that whoever wins the election, we need to maintain close relations. I think that's wise. So, I mean, at least it's the best thing we can do for now until we get some more information that the, that, you know, that the Lord God can trust us with. You know, it's kind of like returning back to your first love. So, you know, these are the reports, folks. And I think that we need to, uh, you know, yes, I mean, pray. Uh, but, um, you know, walk in love and practice what we preach. I think that's what we, what we need to do. But again... I believe that the church has been tested these past four years, and I think that we failed a major test. I believe that if it turns out that Biden does become the next president of the United States of America, that we not pout about it, but that we, uh, you know, we, 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 we practice what we preach during the last four years of, of the President Trump administration. Uh, that, that we do what we, you know, what many were saying that we, sh you know, that we were expecting, you know, to happen with Trump. And if it turns out, that the Biden presidency would return to policies under the Obama administration, this means that it's like the church allowed it. Because it was a worship. People were worshiping Trump, and the church led in that worship. It went from worshiping God to worshiping man. And it was very, it said a very dangerous president. So it's, it's you know, it's God saying, uh, you know, this was very displeasing to me, and I'm very disappointed to see that... If I did put Trump in as a grace, that you guys didn't even take advantage of that. Or if you did, it was to your advantage rather than to the advantage of the word of God. Rather than to pleasing God, you sought to please man. And we know, listen, we got to know what the word of God says as I end this broadcast. Okay, let me, let me just give you this word very quickly here. It's a very important word. It's found in the book of James. In the book of James chapter 4 verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from you? Do they not come from your desire for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may, that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 
we're the church. Oh, let it. I pray that the church has been found worthy of humbling. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Folks, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the Word of God, breaking world news headlines, matching Bible prophecy. I want to invite you to visit my website ministry at www.openyoureyespeople.com. While you're there, look around and take advantage of all that we've been doing for the past 10 years. We're celebrating 10 years of full-time evangelistic ministry, and we want you to take uh, just, you know, we want to take, we want you to take it all and, 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 and learn and, and rightly divide the word of truth and renew your mind, uh, you know, as, as we're told to do in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 12. Come on. Or actually, chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. To no longer be conformed to the dictates of this world, but to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So our ministry is a tool in the hand of God extended to you. So that you can do just that. You can renew your mind. You can do the work that God has called you to do. Come on. You can take a hold of all that he has for you. That he has ordained and mandated for you to receive in these end times. We must. We must take advantage of this. So please visit my website. Learn more about my ministry. And be a student of God's word. Come on. Let the Holy Spirit disciple you. He uses our ministry for that a lot. We've been doing this for 10 years. We've been honored and graced to be a vessel in the hand of God to reach millions across the world, across the face of the world, in every nation, in every continent. Hallelujah. So be discipled. Let our ministry help you with that. Again, visit our ministry at www.openyoureyespeople.com. Um, I want to also ask that you help support the work of the end time ministry with the donation. Your financial donations help make the work of the Send Time Ministry possible. I'm going to also extend an invite for you to become a monthly donor. To become a monthly donor is really cool with our ministry. You know why? Because you help make the work of this ministry possible to do exactly what I just shared with you all. <laughs> so please consider becoming a monthly donor. It's not hard. It really isn't. Just as you, you know, it, you know, just as you start, you can end at any time. So there's no um, weird. Thing, you know where you have to know be cheerful I mean if you've been blessed by the work of the Sentai time ministry there's no reason for you not to donate or you know be a monthly donor you know choose your picking uh, just help support it be a part of a godly cause in these end times come on uh, until the next broadcast may you all be richly blessed our mailing address too if you you know if you want to mail me that would be pretty cool at PO box 218 shirts Texas 78154 Thank you again. Until the next broadcast, be blessed. In Jesus' name, bye-bye.